it's been a while, but um, I've been asked multiple times how to draw wolves or dra dragons. Um, and the thing is, it's kind of the same technique and it's, it's based around how to, how to sketch in general. So um, today I'm going to focus more on wolves. And I'm also going to draw while speaking. So that will be uh, exciting and very new for me. Um, so yeah, I'll start right off and it's always good to um, observe first and try to replicate. So if we look at reference, we can uh, then take that information and simplify it, which is basically how you sketch. So in its basics form, uh, basic forms, uh, you usually have and that's how I learned it, so uh, there are multiple ways to learn it. But um, how I started off with drawing wolves, it would be a circle for head, circle for rib cage, and you can either do another circle for the hips or just a box maybe, because you see there's not really, uh, really much roundness there. Um, but Either way, it will give you a help uh, to find the right proportion, uh, proportions and uh, relations to the dif uh, different body parts. And you would connect them with the spine. And I usually go from the top of the head, not uh, the bottom of the head. Um, and also top of the back and then here would be where the tail goes, uh, continues. Um, then for the limbs, I would usually start the shoulders at the uh, front of the rib cage, and do, yeah, you can uh, immediately do a more complex shape or start off with really a stick figure and it would be a uh, sort of a lightning shape. So shoulder, uh, upper arm, um, and the other part of the arm. <laughs> and then the feet. There are many different ways to simplify the forms. So, um, and the way you simplify it will also influence the style you will uh, develop. So. Uh, it's important to experiment to find the styles or uh, forms that you are most comfortable with. So I'm saying so very often, but um, the next part is the hind legs and you can see here in, uh, at the muscles, they start right at the top already and the bones have this weird relation, but I usually uh, simplify it with the muscle part instead of uh, this kind of weird in the middleness of the hips. And again with a sort of uh, lightning shape. And um, at the beginning you might find that it's difficult to find the right angles, the right proportions, uh, the right sizes. And the thing there is, I learned it by repetition and trial and error. Um, that might take a while and... Um, there are some tricks you can uh, learn, for example, that the shoulder and the, uh, the direction of the shoulder uh, line and the underarm line, uh, if there's something off, then try to make them uh, parallel to each other. The same goes for the hind legs. If there's something that looks wrong, then try to 
um, make it uh, make them parallel. There are of course other ways the body can move, but uh, at the beginning you might have trouble to uh, draw these poses. Um, so yeah, th um, at some point you will find that you don't need uh, to draw to draw every single uh, shape in its uh, total form. For example, you will see me sketch more like uh, squiggly lines and more organic shapes. And for me, that's easier to then find the right uh, proportions and um, size of uh, and shapes of the different body parts. Plus, uh, that way I can um, uh, the, it's easier to make the poses more dynamic if I uh, put more squiggly lines in it. Um, so yeah, it's helpful to look at reference. For example, if you don't really know how to draw the muscles, you can look at a simple uh, anatomy picture. I found it real quickly on Google, Google image search, canine muscles, dog muscles. And if you, for example, just draw over, over it, you can find, um, you can try to find the uh, main lines in the muscles. So there's uh, diagonal lines all over the place. Um, Though you don't have to uh, look up reference all the time, it's also helpful to uh, learn to improvise your poses. Um, that's mostly the way I've learned it. I would look sometimes at videos explaining or deconstructing shapes, forms, um, techniques and later on I would try to integrate it in my drawing process. Um, and if something didn't wor work, I would repeat, um, er erase and repeat it until it somehow looked right. That way you will uh, develop your instinct or your, um, your gut feeling about where things are supposed to uh, be placed and even with the weirdest unrealistic uh, poses, um, you will know roughly where things should be if it were possible for a dog to move that way. Um, and the thing about art style is also uh, there are many different ways to draw or simplify uh, certain details of all kinds of animals or humans and the way you can develop your own style is to well first try it out yourself but also you can look at other people's art for reference the detail the most important detail there is that you shouldn't do it uh, you shouldn't look at only one person's art so if you're going to look up how to draw paws, for example, don't just stay with one artist. Um, try to find as many artists that their art style you like um, and try to mix it up in your own art. Um, try to find out why they used the certain details or what details they didn't draw and 
try to experiment to see if you like to draw that way as well. Um, yeah. So these are roughly, I think I didn't miss anything, but this is roughly how our, I started to learn the basic forms of dogs or wolves. Um, the thing is, if you look at reference photo for wolves, it's a bit difficult to really find out where things end and where things start since their their uh, pelt is very thick and furry for example you wouldn't really know where the bones are where what kind of neck is that uh, how is the bones turning there and if you don't really know much about anatomy, that's maybe not the, a good uh, place to start. So you can look at other species for better reference for the muscles, for example, because uh, I usually uh, visualize muscles and bones when I'm sketching. The fur is only a additional part that comes later, like here and a bit here sometimes and I also don't always call the things I draw wolves since I don't really uh, use realist I don't always use realistic anatomy or um, attributes that wolves have so uh, they're usually simply canines um, for example, I used to draw my hind legs because um, in a different way than uh, realistic dog legs because I simply didn't know how to. So I simply added human anatomy on dog legs. and So uh, human legs on dogs. That was one way to, for me to improvise uh, my anatomy and you can do that as well if you want to simply you simply uh, shouldn't then call them exactly the species they could have been or something like that um, and that kind of improvisation will also help with drawing non-fictional characters or species so I'll now also go a bit more in detail on the head, since that's one of the main features, main difficulties, maybe the main spot for details. And um, I usually always start, even with the more um, uh, rough shapes I use for sketching, I always start with a circle. Um, it helps with the symmetry if you draw them from the front with the cross in the middle and again with the spacing of things of the eyes the nose the ears that can be something that you will get used to in the long run um, but I'll try to break down my kind of thinking so for canines the head is very boxy so even if I start with a circle, I will end up using only angle, angles and boxes and uh, edgy points. Maybe a little bit of round at the chin, but that's about it. And um, there was also a point where I used to draw, or I still sometimes do, uh, do I draw uh, the top of the head completely flat and then only add like uh, the eyebrow thingy uh, to make it a little bit less flat since um, it can sometimes uh, look nice if the uh, eyebrow ridge is very discreet but that 
that's a detail you can change up as well. You can uh, change the angle, make it more like, uh, oops, <laughs> like a snout comes up from a um, plate-like uh, face that goes, that looks like it's very wide in its uh, cheek fur. Um, or you can do it like I said, all flat. It's all. Uh, it all will influence the way you, uh, the way the style will look at the end. And for the eye, I usually place it right beneath the eyebrow ridge. And the thing there is, there is again many different styles. Like you can make cartoonish eyes. Uh, to add expression, or you can um, try to make it as realistic as possible. Uh, I like to include the change of angle in the eyes. So uh, if you draw humans from the side, you'll usually do the eyes like this. So um, with canines, it's maybe less extreme, but the same principle uh, applies as well. So instead of drawing uh, a flat eye shape, like as if it's from the front, like if you see here, I would draw them like this from the front, but from the side I would try to uh, include that side view, that side angle. Um, so yeah, like I said, the proportions and distances, uh, distances between things, uh, you'll have to experiment the, uh, with different versions and try to find uh, what feels right for you. I usually go for diamond shapes uh, in the heads and um, cheek and... Uh, things like that, because those shapes will then uh, help me to find the right placement for the ears. So if I draw a um, head like this, with a flat top on the head, it would be very clear for me that the ears go somewhere around here, maybe a bit broader, depends on the design of the character or the style I want to go for. The, the specific picture and to find the uh, eyes and the nose if it's uh, flat uh, a frontal view I wouldn't descend the snout outside of the uh, circle of the head uh, or at least not too much and the eyes would be, well, like I said, the distances is something that uh, must be felt out. I still struggle sometimes to find the right uh, proportions and sometimes have to change around a lot of things before finding it. And um, for uh, uh, a view from the top, I w instead of doing a circle, I usually would do more a box-like shape. The ears would be only a rectangle since uh, they're like uh, cut of cones. Um, and from the top, you would only see the, um, the tip of, uh, of them. Uh, or the base. So again, with the idea that uh, the head is a kind of plate that the snout is coming out from, I would do the same with the top view, that it's 
kind of uh, the cheek fur makes the plate and the snout goes out from there. Um, and here you can also um, play with the um, the narrowness or the width of the face. Um, so, for example, if you make it more pointy, it would be more like a fox head instead of a wolf's head. And little changes in proportions um, will make it look like different species. So, like I said, I usually avoid calling um, my creatures wolves since I don't uh, specifically reference that species all the time. And another detail that I really like to feature in my drawings are the teeth. So again, reference is important to at least look at and uh, try to um, memorize the general shapes. You don't have to right off the bat know all the details or the names or every single placement. Um, but yeah, um, so I would simplify it with front teeth being more like uh, one line. The Cane, the main canine teeth would be um, roughly in the middle of the uh, front muzzle thing. I don't know the technical terms, but this part. And then the um, the other teeth, I really should should have looked up the technical terms, but um, they're more triangular or like uh, three, uh, th three triangles in one row connected with, it, which, uh, with each other. And again, you can stylize them if you want to, but before you stylize and change up the rules, it's always good to be familiar with the realistic kinds before you uh, start making up your own. It will help you in the end. And of course, you can go the other way around that you start with stylizing your teeth or any detail and later on learn the correct uh, realistic ways. Uh, I think most people go that way around instead of yeah, immediately starting with realistic stuff. Um, and from the front... Yeah, uh, I try to exaggerate some things, for example. Like, I don't think the teeth are very curved, but uh, in uh, realism, but uh, it makes for a more um, striking uh, image. So, yeah, exaggeration should be applied if you want to uh, emphasize something. You can also just uh, exaggerate for the sake of stylization, but uh, it can be helpful to know what to uh, make bigger or smaller uh, to add to the picture. So uh, I would always draw the canines a little bit bigger than uh, realistic, like if you see here it's tiny in comparison if I would draw them like this. Um, and you can draw the front teeth relatively flat. If you... Uh, yeah, well, I've also done a, a separate sort of tutorial about 
how I draw my teeth or um, snarling dogs in general. I linked them in the description and you can check that out as well. I might have gone uh, through some details there uh, that I didn't include here. Um, and the paws are another thing that might be a bit difficult and uh, for the longest time I really didn't know what to do with them. I would usually um, draw them something like this first uh, and I guess you could think a bit uh, like a hoof that's like you you know that um, horses technical uh, technically walk on their toes so it's this kind of angle that uh, instead of the paw going immediately to the ground in a right angle it's a bit slanted and it kind of looks like yeah, I don't know. Their pores aren't all flat like this when they walk. That's basically all I'm saying. And then for the toe parts, I would simply draw them in front. Like from the side, you would mostly see two of them, I think. And from the front, you would see four. And then again, I would do a kind of a dome shape, a triangular shape and then cut the end pieces off, like so. Um, the thumb is... yeah, it doesn't really matter where you place them, I think. No one will notice if it's too high or too low. And um, on the back sides, they don't have a toe, uh, a toe I think. Um, yeah, what else? I simply continue drawing a bit with the muscles and such. Well, yeah, if I would do an even more simplified shape again from the beginning, it would be circle, circle, circle or box, top of the shoulders, top of the legs, shoulder blades, arm piece, another arm piece wrist, um, flat of the hand maybe, and toes. Then again, shoulder, arm, arm, wrist, thingy, toes. Um, maybe a triangle shape here as well. Uh, leg, heel, like this is, I think it was uh, meant, uh, said that the heel goes at the dog like this and toes, triangular shape, leg, heel, toes, spine, tail, neck, spine, piece, um, ears, Muzzle. So that's the um, stick figure of a wolf. Uh, you could call it the skeleton of your drawing. Um, and how you add detail is all up to you and the style you want to go for. Um, an advice with fur, for example, would be um, don't draw um, 
zigzags that are the same shape all along. Um, I look up some reference. And again, it can be a bit difficult to stylize from real life di directly. So again, it's not bad to look at other artist art as long as you look at mul multiple artists and don't just copy from one uh, a single one. So, oops, well, I simply Pull it in here. So if you now look at the furry parts here, you can sh see general shapes in the way the fur moves. And you can use similar uh, directional flows in your pelt as well, like even uh, in the rest of the body. There are different parts that don't really belong to the muscles or the skeleton at all, but simply are the way the fur flows. So. If I were to draw uh, a mane or uh, a pelt, I would usually start with those simplified uh, forms to know the main uh, movements that the fur should go in. So I usually go for something like this and like this. And if I were to add details and singular strands, I usually go for a smooth, uh, smooth neck bit and then fur underneath. And um, I would usually uh, avoid making it all fur, like all fluff, and include small bits of smoothness. But of course, that's a style choice. You can add small strands of fur at every piece of the way, but it's still, um, in my opinion, a more appealing look when the fur alternates. And of course, it also depends on how much patience you have and uh, how much detail you want to include in your artwork. Um, so even in the singular strands, it can make a more appealing look if you clump together certain fur parts and then uh, draw a singular stance like randomly. Um, yeah. And then again, you could add fur at any place you want. Uh, extra fluff stuff. Um, so this was all mostly sketching and a little bit of detail. Um, oh yeah, and for the pause is of course those details as well. I completely forgot to add that. Um, and there again you can go in different uh, levels of detail, like some people include the bony part of the toe as well. Um, like if you look at the reference it would be bone, uh, nail, and something like this. Oops, I drew it on the picture, but yeah. So, 
so in my opinion it's good to um, draw not just muscles and not just fur but also a bit of the bony parts since as you can see wolves aren't all uh, fluff and or dogs in general usually have alternating just like humans there are parts where you can see the outline of the bone more clearly and parts that are completely hidden between all the other stuff um what else well in any case that initial uh sketching the skeleton structure now uh, this structure you can apply this to any creature any animal any uh, thing you want to draw so when you're asking about how to draw wolves and dragons it's basically the same technique um, and of course with reference uh, for dragons of course you can uh, mix together anatomy uh, stuff like uh, you could use for the wing part simply uh, the wings of uh, birds or um, of bats or you can invent your own um, like simply adding another arm and having hand a hand go like this something like that uh, oh, I again used my own style of sketching but uh, in the more controlled way would be circle chest, uh, circle head, circle chest, hips, uh, spine, spine, tail um, and then it depends if you want to have uh, a winged dragon with only wings and hind legs or if you also want to have it be four-legged Here again I use the same thing with the brow ridge being just above the eye. And you could just use uh, similar details to the wolf or any kind of creature. If there's anything that I've missed or glanced over, anything you want me to uh, go more in detail about, I, like I said, I'm not very used to drawing while talking, uh, and there is there might be something that I completely forgot to uh, talk more about. So, yeah, let me know if there's anything you want to. Uh, hear more about yeah and thanks for watching uh, see you next time